Ainsworth is a seven generation family business. We started way back in 1783 uh, and we're famous really for having fabrics that clothe the nation. So we um, did the scarlet cloth back in 1815 which was the thin red line of British uniforms that, that you hear in the history books at the Battle of Waterloo. And ever since then we've been really associated with main uh, elements of British history right up to um, the present day when we've supplied the fabric that Prince William wore when he married Kate. In 1899 we developed khaki. Khaki was a joint development or innovation from Hainsworth and Yorkshire College which became Leeds University uh, and that was came because we had the, the battles in Sudan where uh, the British army had taken Gurkhas from India uh, and they came to Sudan and they were caught in the wars there and they were wearing a dust-coloured uniform. And when they came back to Europe, they said they wanted this dust-coloured uniform in a woolen cloth, similar to the scarlet cloth that they'd been previously wearing. And dust colour is khaki in Urdu. So what we did, we worked out what the environment looks like to various colours from the trees, from the grass, from the bark, and blended it together to create khaki, which meant that the people then were camouflaged in the wars. And that really led through to Hainsworth supplying, or Britain supplying the world with khaki uniforms for the First World War. And leading through there, until after the First World War, there was the formation of the RAF. The RAF was formed as an amalgamation of the Royal Navy Flying Corps and the Royal Flying Corps, and they formed in 1917 to become the Royal Air Force that we know today. And when they were formed, they were wearing Hainsworth khaki cloth and they wanted a new distinct colour. At the same time, the story goes that Hainsworth was supplying the Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, with the blue cloth for his Trossack trousers. And what happened, we all know that uh, the Bolshevik Revolution happened in November 1917. And unfortunately, we were never able to deliver the cloth that we had produced. So the RAF were there with a new regiment wanting a new identity and the opportunity came therefore to take the RAF into blue. And then the Second World War happened uh, and obviously we, we supplied lots of khaki and uniform costs then for the British MOD. In those days all the wool around the, the Commonwealth was only available to be used in military uniforms. It wasn't allowed to be sold anywhere else. And Hainsworth were pivotal in making sure that that process worked and all the mills based in Yorkshire produced a lot of uniform cloth for, for the military to keep them going through those, those days. At the end of the war, times changed and we as a business had to think of things in a different way. The demand for military uniform cloth was reducing. We still very much supplied all the Ceremo uniforms, which was a real big part of our business. And in 1953, we were very fortunate to supply all the fabrics for the coronation, so our connection with today goes back 60 years to the day of the original coronation and we're very proud to have that real link through through history. But at the same time, also the, the ceremonial part of uh, the British Army is, is less in terms of cloth manufacture, so we took the opportunity to look into different markets and diversify and we were already supplying blankets and we then started supplying John Atkinson blankets which you can find in Harrods and John Lewis and Liberty today and more recently we've then launched Scarlet and Argent which is a, a heritage brand into blankets and accessories which also go into those, those, mark, those customers today. So what today is about is really about Hainsworth having the opportunity which has been absolutely fabulous to, to, to launch ourselves more into a retail space and a consumer and get our brand known to the wider public and the feedback we've had for that has been absolutely fantastic it's been uh, astronomical and i think you know the story is appreciated resonates with people and as i said at the start you know we are part of clothing clothing the british empire for the last 230 years the other thing that i probably should mention is actually why we got the royal warrant because although we closed the the british uh, empire and closed royalty for that long time with with, with fabrics uh, those fabrics were sold for uniform cloth, so they weren't direct sales to, to Her Majesty uh, or Prince Charles. Um, but more recently, we've supplied fabrics for furnishings and wall coverings 
uh, and, and seat coverings into Windsor Castle and Buckingham Palace. And we now, in, since 2004, we're very proud to have been awarded the, the Royal Warrant for the supply of furnishing fabrics. Uh, and that ties in also with the, the other part of the history where we are also the, the, the supplier of fabric which covers the wool sack in the House of Lords. Because wool has, uh, was a real significant part of, of British wealth way back into Elizabethan England when Elizabeth I created the wool sack, which is the seat in the upper house of the parliament where the Lord Speaker sits on. And every year when the Queen comes to open parliament, she sits on to, to open parliament. And that's because it's there, because it signifies the wealth and the creation of, of wool and the significance of wool within the, the nation of the British uh, nation. As well as having the Royal Warrant was awarded in 2004 and the story of closing the British Empire, we also have a, another different link to the royal family. And that's really with Kate Middleton, because her family was based in, or part of her family was based in Leeds, and they had a textile mill called William Lupton. And a lot of the, the wealth of the family was created by manufacturing textiles, which were woolen textiles used in Savile tailors. So there was a real link with Hainsworth. What happened with the Lupton family, unfortunately, the, the, the sons were killed in the war, so there was no natural progression to pass on the family to, to the children. In those days, it was just passed down the male line. Uh, but we were in the same village. They were in Pudsey. We were in, we in Farsley, just basically a few miles away from them. So Kate's great-grandmother approached us and said, you know, could we, would we be interested in buying the company? So in 1958, Hainsworth were very fortunate to buy Kate Middleton's great grandmother's company, William Lupton. And obviously that ties in with the link right up till 2011 when she married William, who William was wearing Hainsworth cloth, uh, a business that is still there, in part thanks to Kate Middleton's grandparents and allowing us to buy, buy her business way back in 1958. So it's a small world. Uh, and so to mark that occasion, we created these little cashmere teddy bears because we thought uh, a limited edition, which we are doing here. Um, obviously, with Kate now being pregnant and due to give birth in the next few days. So that really brings us up to the current day, where we are today, uh, and enjoying this absolutely fabulous weather and fabulous location of the Coronation Festival, which you know uh, you can't be more proud than to be here.